Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica Smith and I help you simplify home education so you can work wonders in your home. If you like this video and other videos I've made, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you never miss a new one. So today, I feel like before I move on and talk more about different subjects in the feast and how to teach them, I think it's really important that we talk about how to teach a lesson in general, like how to apply all these methods that Charlotte Mason taught, also ones that I have talked about from the book Make It Stick and other books on teaching, kind of bringing them all together and how to apply them in a way that's applicable for all subjects. So today I'm gonna to talk about how to teach a lesson. Kind of seems simple, but I think that it's gonna be really, really good for you. Even if you are a veteran homeschooler, a new homeschooler, this method has been revolutionary for me, and I hope it will be for you. Now, if you have had a previous lesson, you may ask your child to narrate. This is called delayed narration or retrieval. You want them to tell back what they remember from last lesson. This is super important to do because it's having the mind dig down into long-term memory and haul up all these pieces of information that they remember from last lesson. And every time that your brain has to dig for knowledge, it's creating a path that's stronger and easier to get. So you want to do this often. And again, this is called retrieval. It's super effective learning method. So I just start at the beginning of the lesson and I ask my child, hey, can you tell me what happened last time? Or even say, I don't remember what happened in the last chapter, the last time we read. Can you remind me? They love to do this and they're very good at it. Then after you have you know, kind of laid a foundation, what happened? then you want to pique your child's interest. Charlotte Mason said that you kind of just, you want to wet their whistle. You want to give them a sneak peek or a sample of what's to come in the lesson so that they're excited. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You, if you've pre-read the chapter and your child has done some delayed narration, you could say something like, oh yes, I remember we left off with this guy, you know, about to do this thing. I wonder what he's gonna do. Okay, so in this chapter, we're gonna find out, and I think it's gonna surprise you, right? You want to get their, their interest peaked. Another thing that I like to do, this is called generation in the book, Make It Stick. So you want your child to generate solutions to a new problem. This is really good for math or science. So you present them with a, pro a new math problem they've never encountered. Let's say how to multiply fractions. And so you give it to them. I like to put it on the chalkboard and say, okay, how would you solve this? You can give them the problem on the board and give them a couple days to solve it, all day or two days, and have them write down questions. You want them to be interested in the answer. You want them to be excited to find out how to solve it because they have some, they've put some skin in the game to say. So having them try to generate solutions to a problem. Then another thing that you can do for something that isn't like math or science, let's say history or um, nature study, you can have them generate questions. This is called the question formulation technique. Now, I don't use it the exact way that the authors have in their book. It's called Make Just One Change. I don't do it the exact way and I don't do it for every subject, for every lesson, but occasionally I will do it to get them excited. So you could use a picture, you could, or a photo, you could use, um, you could use music, a sound, you could use a, f a word or a phrase, have them look at that and generate all the questions they can think of. So they're going to brainstorm questions about this object, a photo, a sound, um, a song, whatever it is. I mean, you could use this for all subjects, composer study, artist study, nature study, history, and then you're gonna have them brainstorm all those questions. Then change the questions from open to closed, change the wording to get the question so that it's going to give you the best possible answer. We want them to pick questions that they want to pursue, only like two or three from this, and then help them find answers either 
as you read the book so it may take a few weeks as you're reading for them to find those but I like to put them up where my child can see and so that's one way to pique their interest is to get them asking questions okay so your child's interest has been piqued they're ready to learn so Charlotte said that a, ch a lessons material or a child learns best from from books and things so well-written living books which I've talked about in another video and then real things though as if the you can get the real thing great um, if you can only find a picture of it because it was something from the past or someone from the past that's fine but you want the real the real thing and you want good living books and that is going to make up the bulk of your lesson material now things could also be considered maps so if you're doing geography it would be a map that they're going to look at and so you're gonna ask questions or have your child ask questions about the map before you begin looking at it and talking about the map you're going to have them ask questions about the Civil War before you begin reading about the Civil War or you can give them a little hint or show them a picture about the Civil War get their interest going then you're going to read about it in the lesson and so after you've done this you've read the book you have looked at the object and you have gained knowledge from those things then you must narrate so your child's going to tell what they learned now they're classifying they're generalizing they're summarizing they're analyzing they're doing all kinds of things after they've learned when they narrate and so it's important that they tell back what they've learned. Now they can, when they're young, they're just gonna do this orally or maybe writing or drawing a picture of what they've learned and then they can tell you what to write down to go with it. As they get older, they're going to be writing down their own narrations and drawing in notebooks. Now I love notebooks and I love the place that it has in a Charlotte Mason education. Notebooks, I by notebooks I mean a blank book where they are going to put their narrations and the knowledge the lear they've learned, those little gold nuggets that they've dug for in their books and in their research and in their experiments. They're putting all that in these notebooks on these blank pages and filling it up. So they are applying, they are organizing, and they are telling back what they've learned from their lesson. Now, if you uh, if they ask some questions and you wrote them on the board or you wrote them in their notebook this is also a really good place to put their questions is in their notebook then their na narration could be answering those questions that they asked before the lesson began or even a few lessons or a few weeks ago it may take a while to answer questions and this is good so um, that for math narration may be hey will you show me what you learned today with manipulatives for a younger kid for an older kid it may be will you make up a new math problem based on the concept you learned about so in the example i used earlier it was multiplying fractions so if he has tried and tried to figure out how to multiply a fraction maybe he didn't but he got close you can show him how to do that and then at the end of the lesson say okay i want you to show i want you to make a uh, problem it could be a real life problem it could you know be a story problem using multiplying fractions and that is it those are the four components of any lesson number one is to um, retrieve is retrieval or delayed narration to ask your child what did we learn about last lesson the second thing is to pique their interest especially getting them asking questions so that they want to learn more they want to find answers the third thing is to present the material in the most living way possible either through living books or through real objects and the fourth thing is for them to narrate what they've learned and record their knowledge you're teaching your children how to learn you are putting the responsibility of learning and their education in your child's hand you're just giving them a little bit of scaffolding that they can take and use for the rest of their life so if you have any questions don't hesitate to leave a comment below and i have a treat for you today i made this cheat sheet with all of the steps so that you can begin applying it today and have that available when you teach the link will be in the description box below